guys, welcome back to episode of Diamond Time. This is the second lap of the King of the Motos race, and we're getting at it once again. So if you haven't seen that prologue video or the first lap, go ahead and check that out. This is the second lap, and we're, we're getting moving here. So I just rolled through the second lap, and now I'm really struggling here. This is right out of the pits, and I'm just getting really screwed up here, trying to get up this super gnarly rock face. I just spent a ton of time in the pits trying to fix that flat. I went in, and one of the older guys was like, oh, it's a tubeless, you can fix it, no problem. We put some slime in it, um, I put some air in it, saw where you know some of the air was coming out. It was probably like a two inch gash in the thing. and. I, ended, I put five plugs in it and it looked like it held, it was starting to hold air. I thought I had fixed it, but probably about just a little bit after this clip, I felt it go completely flat again. So all in all, I spent 35 minutes in the pits and that was that was kind of a huge mistake. If I already rode like two, I already rode three hours, three, probably four hours in the first lap on this flat tire, I should have just kept going. Like my rim, you know, if it's damaged, it's damaged, you know. The tire's are already gonna be shot from running it like this, but I don't, I, sh I really shouldn't have tried to fix it, but I did. I think that time is definitely gonna cost me. But at the same time, it was I was able to kind of take a little bit of time off the bike and, you know, breathe a little bit. My girlfriend was there. She was being super helpful, handing me like bars and sandwiches, like little bites of this and that, handing me, handing me tools. So that really helped having her there and getting that second win that, that I needed for the second lap. As you can see, back to grueling rock crawling. We're just pumping through this stuff. And the second lap is actually very similar to the first lap, which is kind of a disappointment. I wish they, I heard Cody Webbs kind of say the same thing, like the second lap was too similar. They should have just taken us on a whole different area. But I think what happened was with the guy, the new guy that's putting on this race, he took over for Jimmy Lewis, um, who who's kind of started this race and, and was doing it the past couple years. And I don't think King of Hammers guys gave him the leeway on this on his first attempt they kind of said reuse some of the previous courses and put it together there he wasn't able to kind of build a complete the complete course exactly how he wanted it but i'm sure because this race went smoothly this year that they'll let him keep going and take a little bit more chances next time on developing the course kind of exactly how he wants it well getting lost again but i do see flags here so i figured i did something wrong I'm looking at the crowd and I'm like, which way to go? I point up there and, and like probably 20 people pointed, yeah, that way. <laughs> it was a super unique moment that didn't really come through on the GoPro, but it was crazy to see all those people just like point and be like, that way. <laughs> some motivation and so, and which triggered us some momentum to get up this side hill crawl. At that second lap, I've got two GoPro 7s. I swapped the, the previous one out because the card got full. And this one, I'm gonna be a little bit more judicious about turning it on and off. The last one, I just kind of let run for the first, you know, however long the card would let me. But we're back in this relentless, like, soft base rock sand stuff. Oh, come on. trying to push through trying to get traction on those hard rocks and in this like slow rock stuff I'm just really sitting far back on the seat and making sure to weight the bike if I have to stand up I put pressure down on with my feet one foot might be on the rock but the other foot that's on the peg I'm making sure to push down <laughs> it's one thing that a lot of beginners will do is that they'll take their feet off and they'll lose, they'll forget to put traction on the rear tire and just start spinning. You can hear me tractoring up this stuff and getting traction and that's because I'm putting so much downward pressure weight on the back of the seat or from standing up on those foot pegs. But in something like this, I'm gonna need to wrap up it or <laughs> stall it like I did a million times. 
You can see that jolt thing that I did to kind of back up and get some speed, but I only made up so far, so I had to I had to put that weight back on the on the rear of the seat. Cody Webb told me one time like sit on the fender when you're when you're spinning the tire, you know. So I always think about that like oh I'm, I'm spinning, I gotta get way way back there, move all the way back. I wish there's more sections like this. This is a super cool rock chunk. I love that hard pure rock type of riding. Um, a lot of this race was just tons of soft, sandy, bouldery things, but I really like when there's big chunks of, you know, I'm used to riding big chunks of granite like what Donner, the Donner hair scramble had. This stuff, ha this race had lots of soft stuff and that's why M5B IRC tire is killing it. But I'm definitely killing the tire with this uh, <laughs> zero pressure thing. I'm gonna do a, I, I'm gonna do a video on the after shot of what this tire looks like after riding the six hour race with a flat tire because <laughs> it's pretty beat up. There's my buddy Kevin. He's a SoCal hard enduro ripper. Um, I'm, all, I'm always coming down down south and riding with him. He just he knows some really fun trails, really hard trails I should say, that just punish the hell out of me because I'm not used to the hill climb stuff that they have, and it's awesome to get you know put in my place and and ride something kind of out, outside of my comfort zone. But me and Kevin were going back and forth a lot in this race, and we are both feeling it at this point. Super tired, super exhausted. And we've got this guy on the TM that we also saw a lot on the race. I don't know if it was him or another TM guy, but you don't see these TM dirt bikes anywhere. I've only seen them like at some of the races. I, I never see them in real life, really. I don't even know where you buy one, but they sound really cool. They're really crisp. <laughs> it's got a different sound to it, right? I'm pretty sure they're carbureted, kickstart. I kind of think they they don't have an e start though, which kind of sucks. Uh, let me know in the comments if the TMs have e starts. They've got that aluminum frame, which is which you don't see very much of these days. And you can see here he was he's losing a lot of traction. He needs to really I think he I think he needs to put more downward weight on those foot pegs when he's trying to get up this stuff. You can see that tire spinning around it. It looks like he's got the IRC IX09, which is super gummy, but his moose might be pretty hard because. I think the TM guys are more of like desert racers. Although this is the desert race, this is definitely like a hard enduro race. So I'm gonna just try to sneak by him if I can here. We're both super tired, so it's like to use, to like <laughs> make that extra energy to get past him is just, it's just so tiring. Pretty insane to think that trucks make it through this terrain we're riding. Last night we went out to see it firsthand. You can see the mountain lit up with lights and they call that chocolate thunder. There's just people scattered everywhere on the mountain, bumping music, little campfires everywhere, fireworks going off, shooting them at their buddies, and of course everyone's sending it in their trucks. We moved over to another mountain with a gnarly pit feature they call backdoor. Everyone was just drinking beer, heckling their buddies, and trying to get the drivers to send it. This one truck we saw fully flip over, and instantly 40 people jump out of the shadows and start flipping the truck back over. The dude in the passenger seat, you can see he, <laughs> he saved his beer. He, <laughs> he didn't even get out of it. <laughs> They're back, back to it. Super cool mountain goat trails. This is this would be really fun to ride in a non-race setting where you could just go at your own pace uh, with all your buddies. But this downward thing was pretty sketchy. You see, I have to stop and pop my front tire up and then stop again because otherwise you might it'd be really easy to go over the bars right there.
pretty surprised at how how luggy my 250 is it's been feeling pretty it's really boring to ride this 250 on single track but it's it's really good for all this hard enduro stuff but i do think that i'm ready to go to a 300 just for the hill climb need of getting through the bigger stuff i really like how light the 250 is for and how nimble it is and how easy it is to pop up over rocks like on waterfalls and things that are quick but when you get to the deep hill climbs i really wish i had some of that 300 lug that's sketchy You can hear me hitting the starter going down that thing. Um, uh, Matthew Nutter on YouTube asked in the prologue video, did you swap your starter buttons? He noticed the different colors on the sides, the left and right. And I did move my starter button from the right to the left. That's something I do on all my bikes. Um, after Brandon, I bought a, bike, a 250XC from Brandon Krauss and he had it swap. It seemed a little weird at first, but I just, I just kind of rode with it for a while and found that it had a lot more advantages than being on the right. And that's because you can keep your hand on throttle and hit the e-start with the left hand. So it's easier to pull the clutch in and take your thumb off than it is to twist the throttle with your hand on the thumb because if your hand's turning down, it's moving away from the e-start button. So why these guys do this for the racing is when you do those dead engine starts, they hit the e-start and the kickstart at the same time and they're giving it tons of gas with the clutch in. So that would be really hard to do if the e-start was on the right. And I remember seeing uh, Cody Webb on his bike, he had it swapped as well. So that kind of confirmed to me that it's also a good thing because you know that he's, uh, he's like the best hard enduro guy in America. So it makes sense for him. Uh, and it's feeling good for me, I, th I think it's the right decision. If any of you guys run the starter button swap, let me know the, down in the comments. Let's give it up for the, the left starter button, guys. some four by four guys give me a thumbs up that's awesome i do not have the energy to take my hand off but <laughs> thanks for the motivation dude let's take a quick break for a shred it of the highlights of this race another highlight video for YouTube that's like five to ten minutes long uh, let me know down in the comments if you think it should be to a song the raw two-stroke or with some kind of commentary all right let's get back to lap two and let's make it through the sucker so you can see right there that guy was right ahead of me on this check and I'm pretty sure he only beat me by 30 How you doing? seconds Doing good. All right, it is 2:55 at three o'clock. We yeah. have to send people back, so you're you're probably <laughs> you're you're probably our last guy. Okay. So your next checkpoint, uh, checkpoint three, you'll you'll probably tap out. Yep. Okay. Good and to know. You got you got half an hour to get there. Sweet. So, you job. can hear the excitement in my voice <laughs> as I'm getting some motivation that this is my last lap. Um, and I get to take a break here soon, so that was pretty funny. He thought I'd be the last guy, but that's not true because my buddy Kevin came in just shortly after me. He might have went through the section as well. But basically what's going on is that at each checkpoint, there's, there's a time limit to get to it. And at this checkpoint, it's like, this is probably check two or three in lap two. You have until three o'clock to get to it. I just made it by five minutes, and he's saying I have half an hour to get to the next check checkpoint because the next checkpoint closes at 3.30. So I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to make it to the next check in a half an hour, but you know, I'm just, I'm gonna press on as hard as I can because if I could get another check, that would be uh, super epic. I 
Russian guy on the Ready to Ride rental bike, which I think he beat me by like 30 seconds, I want to say. So we're really close. So the scoring of this race is really weird. I went back and forth, the guys on the American Hard Enduro West page, about how they judge this race. The order of importance for scoring of this race is that you want to get as many laps as you can. There's three total. I don't think anyone made three laps. Next importance is the least amount of penalties. Because if you get a penalty, you're, you're automatically behind all the people with the same amount of checks as you. So from there is the lowest time between all the people. So all the people that got nine checks, they order you based off of the shortest time. But if you had a penalty, you're automatically put to the lower part of that that list of lowest penalties. I know it's super confusing, guys. I, I spent a lot of time trying to figure it out. I need to write up a paragraph on how to explain it, but you want to get the most laps, the least penalties, the most checkpoints, and then the lowest time. And what happens if you get a penalty? That means you like go off the course, or they find that you miss a checkpoint or something, so you automatically get an hour added to your time. And this totally killed uh, Matty Luttenberg, because he, him and Cody Webb were battling the whole time between first and second for the pros. Matty uh, ended up... Le he ended up winning the race. He, he came in to finish first, but what had happened is that he missed that back door section, which is kind of the most, you know, like the hardest like rock feature. He followed his GPS and he, he kind of went off course and missed that rock feature that he had to go between the two cones. And there was tons of people there, so they saw him not go up it. Because Cody Webb went up it, Cody did not get any penalties. Maddie did. So he set back an hour in time, but still, even with that hour in time, he still managed to get a third place. So that's how, how much faster all the pros are than the amateurs that, that you could you could get an hour out of your time and you're still finishing number three in this race. Super insane. You know, th those guys are on another level, especially the European guys. They're just, the, the, the races that they, they do over there are super gnarly. I'd love to do one of those one day, see if I can make it through one. <laughs> that would be a, a pretty big accomplishment. crawlers way up here working on their trucks pretty funny just crawling past them i don't know if they know they're on the moto tr moto course or not but i don't think they really care you can hear me just sighing from <laughs> from the gnar um, it's getting late in the day i'm like oh do i have the power to get up this luckily it <laughs> goes pretty smooth haven't seen anyone in a while you're just out here by yourself it's kind of one of the things that i liked about this race is that you weren't like battling back and forth the whole time like you were at like say donner hair scramble or enduro fest um you're just kind of out here like in the middle of nowhere and you're just you're just getting through it, it felt like a good adventure ride um even though it was a race it's cool that they have so much you know mileage to deal with at Enduro Fest, I think it was because it's at an event area, you have a small course, and you just, there was no transfer section, so you're just pushing through the rocks for two and a half hours, and, and I feel like this was the right amount of kind of gnarliness and 
transfer sections to kind of cool down and breathe on. It felt like you're very out there, so it felt like very adventurous. It felt like it, like you're kind of exploring and seeing new things. Um, here I'm, here I'm getting lost, as you can see. That's what kind of happens. But you know, that's what happens on rides. You, you get lost and you try to find your way. So that's just part of it. Um, there's this fence here, so I don't know what's going on. Um, my GPS says you need to follow it, but I'm pretty sure it's saying I need to be on the other side of the fence, so I'm just going to drop down and go around this thing. Pretty sure there's a hole in the fence over there, but yeah, I don't know. I, it was, this was super confusing part. A lot of people got confused right here. But it's interesting between like this race and the Donner Hair Scramble, I felt way more beat up after the Donner Hair Scramble than I did at this race. And I don't know why that is, because this is like six hours of just rock punishment. And Donner was, it's only two and a half, but Donner was such a sprint and you're just passing people constantly. The rocks are a lot smoother too, so I feel like this would just kind of beat up your body a lot more. But for whatever reason, I wasn't depleted at the end of this race. I think because I was, I was able to take the time to, you know, to take a little snack breaks here and there, to, to come through lap two, eat a little bit of a sandwich as much as I could put down. And, and this felt more like a normal ride that I go on where you're, you're out all day. telling us you have to go back up this thing I don't know if <laughs> kind of sucks that you have to ride the sucker again because there's less people it seems like it's a little bit easier to, to crawl up it kind of know the line a little bit better this time around I know I gotta I gotta wrap up up this sucker you can see all the scrapes on the on the rocks so in that case right there I kind of got my front tire on it and I put all my weight on the very back dropped the clutch and then put all my weight on the very front and, and got up the thing it's kind of like a sort of like a bunny hop type of thing to check that I have run up that see that little like uh, brop before backing up kind of packs in the dirt and then I try to brop up it but I, I got screwed up here so here I'm leaning way back finding a position for my legs and just launching the bike up but still having the clutch on there on the fingers to control it it's, I know it's gonna wheelie I'm really good at these brop hop types things um, it might be because of the 250 is nice and light and can wind up pretty good but I, I love doing those little those little hop ups. So here I'm just kind of pivoting that front tire around. It's super steep right here. my 
back tire is getting all caught up in the rock so you got to move it around to just free it up some <laughs> I feel like this section would be really easy to loop out on. I bet you there's a lot of good footage of that. I'm trying to hold that momentum and just push around this thing. So I'm gonna take another break here because I made it through <laughs> and then get back on it. So it sucks getting screwed up like that right in front of a crowd, but <laughs> you can see I'm just oh, I'm just pushing through this crap. Um, <laughs> these downhill things, I'm just, I don't know what you call them, just toppling through it. So here we've got a new section. My GPS normally would go right. This is a new section. I can't even see a trail, but I saw this guy coming, uh, number five, the red plate coming through. What's up? I think I'm done. If uh, it's 3.30. They said they were closing checkpoint three at 3.30. Yeah. And I was coming up that hill, I had six minutes. Yeah. I figured, all right, if I get up it, I'll bust ass. Cause it's just right over here. Yeah. They, and then they have this section uh, thrown in and I got stuck. I thought, well. Will they not, they won't score us if we show up? No, if they close it. Okay. okay. Yeah. That's what I mean. There's no point in us. Yeah. 1532. Yep. Good racing with you today, bro. You too, man. That was uh, some good shit. Let's go talk to him. Cause yeah, yeah. So we're going to go see what's going on. See if we can, if we make it to the next check, if we, if we could get a score or not. Um, it's, it's pretty unclear. They didn't really discuss that in the riders meeting. So it's 333. Yeah. So if we get there, well, I mean, why go there? Well, they, they won't score us. It's your decision. Will they score well, no, you? Our, we don't make the rules. You guys do. Well, but I, all I'm doing is safety stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I don't know if you get there, if they'll score us and not let us, they won't let us go through for sure, but do we get a score? Well, you, you probably will. Yeah. Your choice, you know, take a minute, drink some water. Yeah. It. Is that but pretty if you brutal? Want, if you want to exit through here, it's your... Oh, it's not bad. I mean, we could ride right up it, but I'd hate to ride this whole section of the trail and get there and have nobody be there. It's, it's short. I mean, once you crest the top of that hill, you can drop back to the back of the track. No, I know. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, I got energy. Just trying to get my money's worth. This race is probably like 400 bucks, so I'm just gonna beat myself up, try to get as many scores as I can possible. Little did I know this is gonna be the that brutal section. It's so rough that I just can't get any momentum, and I need it because this section gets steep right here. to try to wrap up that thing with no momentum because I know I'll just loop it out and waste a ton of energy picking my bike up and possibly breaking something. So I'm going to try to reroute it, see if I can get through, squeezing by, trying to get my, my tires around. But we're coming to the end here. I'm not going to make it much further. Um, I make it up to the, to the top, but I shut my GoPro off. What ended up happening is I got to Got to the top, there's a guy up there, he was like, hey, you guys can't go any further. So we were really close to the checkpoint, but not quite close enough to where the guy just shut us down. What ended up happening is that I got 18th overall between the pro and am, all 124 hour, 24 riders. Um, in amateur, I got third place, and in the B class, I got first place. So they are doing A, B, C, and pro for uh, the AMA Extreme Enduro Series, so currently I'm in first place for that, which I'm super stoked about, and I'm I'm looking forward to hitting more of the races. I don't know if I want to do the Texas Rev Limiter. That seems a little bit far for, you know, coming from California to ride, so I don't, I don't think I'm going to actually make it to that one, but, you know, let me know in the comments if you think I should. I definitely want to hit the Idaho one. I'll hit Enduro Fest, and I don't know if I'm going to do Last Dog Sand. That one seems... Got it.
a little on the hot side to be to be riding hard enduro, so I don't know. Yeah, so I did two laps. I think I made nine checks, um, and it took me, I don't know, six hours or so. My buddy Colby was kind of nerding out on some of the stats. He said that that Russian guy, he beat me by 30 seconds at that last check. If I would have taken a shorter pit stop, I would have done a lot better but I took that 35 minute pit to try to fix my tire and it, it kind of cost me. But you know, my, my whole goal of this race was just to make it through. It was not a, it's not a race for me. It was just a, a means of getting through it. And then it's, it was an endurance thing. I'm just stoked to make it and I'm stoked to share it with you guys. If you guys were there, let me know that in the comments what you thought of the race. And if you guys liked this video, I'd be stoked to hear what you liked about it. So if you guys haven't already, subscribe, give it a thumbs up. You can check out our shop at trailbond.co. So I'm going to go finish making some tugger straps and some other trailbond products and get ready for the next weekend of ripping. So, as always, we'll see you guys out on the trail.